What is up everybody, it is no one shot coming right back at you with another Star Trek Fleet Command video. Today we are going to talk about what ship you should choose pertaining for each level you go. Some of you guys are further in the game and have pretty decent sized ships already and you're like where should I go from here? Or some of you guys are just barely starting the game out and wondering like what, what fashion should I go with or what ship should I go with? Where should I put my resources into and what should I actually go into? These questions are honestly quite simple. I'll give you a basic explanation and where to go from the start. If you can get certain ships from events or whatever you want to call it, I would say do it because some of these ones are going to fill your gap from certain levels so you can skip certain faction ships so you can get to the point where you need to be. So let's look at our ship section. So let's click here and let's go to the ships. So the first ship we're going to look at is when you hit Ops 25 and if you're able to get the ship through the event store or somehow would be the Vidar. The Vidar is a wonderful ship for level 25 to 30. As long as you're able to grind out the uh, Borg dailies, the Borg in general, and grind out the probes, this ship will serve you wonderfully up to Ops 35 or Ops 30. It will. It reaches out, I think, about 1.5 million in uh, power. I can verify this pretty quickly because let me pull mine out. Mine is not maxed out. Mine is currently in tier. Uh, 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 let's see tier 8 right now so it's it's almost maxed out as 1.1 million and this ship's wonderful for the fact that it has good crits has a good chance to ability as long as you're using like pike maroon chen if you have it or tadad uhura uh what is it called instructor spock and another person as long as you have your normal pve crew you can link back to one of my other videos if you don't know what the pve crews are go link back to my officer videos because that will give you the correct amount of information with those ships you can use so that's the first ship i would say go for from 25 to 30 and their next ship you would want to work on would be if you're going federation it is definitely always always going to be the saladin the saladin is a beast saladin is going to be another good workhorse ship for you in the long run for your tier two faction ships i always advise to skip tier one as long as you're able to get your hands on a vidar as long as you're able to if you're not then you might want to go with mm, it's a hard choice if you ever want to go with the first faction ship because the faction first faction ships are kind of just Ugh. You have the D3, you have the Mayflower, which everyone calls the Payflower, which has always been one of those ships that wasn't the best in the Legionary. It's really a toss up on that one. That one's on your choice. But once you get to the tier three, or going into tier three faction ships, such as the, um, actually, tier two, so you have the Centurion, the Saladin, and uh, where's the last one? The Bordas. Bordas is a definite. You get the Saladin and Bordas if you can get those routes. Those are two I always suggest to go with, but mainly solid. And but if you want a PvE focus, the board is because of its abilities. And why the board is because of its abilities? Actually, no, it's wrong. But the board is a great ship. I always used to use it, and it always worked out for me. But now let's go on to the next one. So we're going into our tier three faction ship. You have the Brel, you have the Intrepid, and you have the Gladius. And if you're going fa Federation, it would hardly tell you guys to go with the Intrepid if you want to go PvP. I hear it's good for PvE related because it's ability, if you go into its ability, it gives you 40% 40, uh, 40 uh, defense for hostiles, so you take less damage from hostiles, but then you could go over to the Brel, if we look at the Brel right here, so it does cloak and system. When fighting the hostiles for the first round of combat, the Brels decreases the opponent's ship armor piercing, shield piercing by 15%, so yet again it takes less damage. And we go over to the D or the um, Gladius. So I just shot right past it, Gladius. So its ability, remember these scale up as they level. So they every time you level the ship up, it gets stronger, these abilities. So when fighting hostiles, the Gladius increases damage by 35% toward hostiles. So it's just gonna, it gets higher and higher. And we take a look at my current Gladius. My choice, I would go the Brel. But then again, if you're going for the Federation route, you go with Intrepid. And then you pop into getting an Enterprise and not having to worry about the gas shortage. But we'll go over the tier three or tier four faction epics in a quick second. Let me swap out to my Brel and I'll show you, or I can do the Brel and the Gladius. So as you see the Gladius right here, it's weapons are at 54% at uh, level 20. And we go over to my Brel, should be right on the side dock. And as a max level Burrell, it has a 35% chance of accurate doing the same, same damage. Alright, so now we're going on to the tier 4, our tier 4 
epic or tier uh, tier three or G three epic chips. And this is where everyone always is gonna get into tissy, but there's only a definite clear cut winner in this whole cases. Federation all the way for the Enterprise. And why the Enterprise? The Enterprise has a built in Spock. For you people who are running Enterprise with Spock, take him off. Please, for the love of God, take him off. Why? Because it's his stability. As long as the ship has morale, the US Enterprise heals the shield health by 5% every time, whenever it gets hit. So, what does that mean? Every time you get a shot on you, you're gonna heal your, your shields are gonna go up. And what does that mean? You don't need Spock. Take him off. All right, that's why this Enterprise is the best G3 epic. I have taken out jellies. I have done significant damage to Katingas, Newtons, not Newtons, Katingas, ne uh, Kelvins. I've done significant damage to a Quarry. <laughs> it's endless. I've done some damage to a. Uh, what is the last one again? I always forget the last G4s at this point. Da -da 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 and the Valdor. I've done significant damage to all those. But once you get to that point in the game where you're already getting, you have your faction, your G3 epic faction ship, and you're wanting to go into the G4 territory, my advice lock all three of your factions. And once you lock it, go Romulan. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But we're going to cover the other two G3 epics. So we have, da, 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 let's see, we have the auger and the D4. If you were to decide between the auger and D4 and you didn't want to go, enter, if you don't want to go to the Enterprise, I would say auger. Enter, D4 is the weakest faction G4 or G3 epic, plain and simple. There, people have talked about it, people have showed it off, and that's about it on that one. So now we're going to get to the point of why to go Romulan once you hit over 10 mil faction locked on all three factions. The reasoning behind it is. The Romulans have by far the best <laughs> G4 ships in the game. So, the Romulans have the Valdor. That alone is a beast. I've seen so many I've seen so many videos or Scott showing them off, and the Valdor is awesome. And I have my other whale on my server, which would be uh, CDR Gene Wolf. He has a Valdor, and that thing's a beast. We go into the Pilum, and the Pilum breaks triangle. Breaks down a triangle, period. Just if you crew it right, thing is a beast. I saw a Pilum taking down a Coronar, a Coronar at the same level. And it's <laughs> all the way. And the last Benali ship is the Tribune. The mini Death Star, I will, I'll call it. It is a mini Death Star. Why? Why is it a mini Death Star? Because its ability. Its ability is called Fire Barrage. As long as the opponent is burning, at the start of each round, the Tribune increases the number of shots of each weapon by one. At one point, this thing shoots 22 shots per round. 22 shots. That is epic. Literally epic. If we ever get that far, that's where I'm going. But that's like years and years and years out in the future for me. But let's talk about one more ship that is underestimated that I've seen some good PVE work with and it wasn't designed for it is a Stella I saw this thing taking down <laughs> I took down a level 39 uh, trader with this with minimal damage and mine's only a tier 5 with Pike Moreau and Chen this could be another little PVE grinder only limiting factor on the ship is its warp range its warp range locks you at 33 so it doesn't go far but if you can get that ship in a system and you need an extra little little grinder there you go for cheap repair cost all right i hope this video was informative i know it was a little bit normal no one shall a little bit everywhere but i wanted to bring this video to you and talk about which ships you want to go with and which ships you don't and that was about it all right, don't forget to like the subscribe button, the bell notification down below. Remember to become a member to help my channel out. It's either two, five, 10 or 20 bucks a month. I greatly appreciate any support you guys give me. And there's a donation link down below if you want to, but I'm not gonna ask. But if you guys want to, I greatly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Don't forget to join my Discord. That link is down below, down there. You can go down there and touch it, look at it, go into it and say hi. But that's about it, guys. It is no one shall sign it out. Have a wonderful day. Peace out.